We'll begin the service today and we'll sing number 324, Near My God to Thee. <laughs> So many times in the last few weeks we have been asked to draw nearer to him. In the song that we sung there, are we drawing nearer? Are we walking closer with him? Are we willing to put it all into our Lord and Savior's hands? Are we willing to be reconciled, this body reconciled, 
to his will being done in us. And laying aside the things that will so easily set us at distance from him. And that's the things of this world, our carnal mind, friends. That mind that the world will look upon as these are normal things and they are things that the world looks upon as we should enjoy and be a part of. But it may be things that the Lord is saying that we need to leave off and to draw near to him. Instead of having our mind so carnal and on things of this world, to have it on things above, he says, as he said, to seek ye first the kingdom of God. To seek the things above, and he says, I'll add to you all of these other things. He says, I'll give you the riches here or all that you need here upon the earth. I'll give you the riches of eternal life, and I'll give you the rest of what you need here upon the earth. So many times, though, if we aren't careful, that it's what we want instead of what we need that we seek after. But let's put it into the hands of Jesus Christ our Lord. And let's each and every one of us ask this morning the question, do I truly know him today? Have I truly repented and accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and am I walking with him today? Friends, if we aren't, we need to move up. If you, can't, if you don't have that in your heart, that testimony today, there is something wrong. And now is the time to make it right with him. Now is to, the time to overcome Satan by the power of God through the spirit of the Holy Ghost that's available to all that ask. So let's all this morning ask him to examine our heart and what is coming from your heart and what is coming from mine and what is coming from my mouth and what is coming from my works here upon the earth. Does it let that light shine? Does it let that spirit shine within you and within me this morning that we're walking close with him and we're ready to go we're ready to stay ready to do his will thank him for what he has done so that we can have that opportunity today to be saved but there will come a day a great day that there will come for all of those that are righteous. It will be a great and a wonderful day to rise to meet our Lord. But to the wicked and to the undone will be a sad day. And it will be a sad day that will never be able to, that they'll never be able to overcome. So let's put it into his hands today and accept him and walk with him and lay aside that carnal mind that Satan will have you believing and how he will deceive you and how he is a liar. And how we, we must put it all. What does the Lord ask for? He asks for it all, for all of our being to be put into his hands. And to submit to him in our entirety. So thank you. And thank him. And let's all rest assured that that is something that we can obtain to this morning. We can attain to that. If we'll just put our will aside and walk with him. Turn to Acts this morning. The 
This is the 12th chapter of Acts, and we'll start reading there. There's a lot of miraculous works that was going on in those days that God was doing to promote and to establish his kingdom here upon the earth. He had men that was willing to go out and to preach the gospel in the face of whatever danger it might be. They were willing and they were ready to go and to preach and to teach the things that was necessary to be done in those days. We'll start there at the first verse. Now, about the time, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Herod there was a wicked king. A man that wanted to try to do something to please the Jews. And the Jews wanted the work of Jesus Christ to be put off the earth. They wanted it so bad they went to him and, they, and Pilate and they requested that, he be, that Jesus Christ be put to death, to be crucified. And they were, they were able to have those things accomplished. But it was because Jesus Christ laid down his life because that was why he came here. He came here to fulfill the law. And he came here so that you and I now would have the opportunity to have that eternal life that we would have to be able to overcome Satan here in all things. But Herod here, when he saw that it pleased the Jews to do these things, he loved the praises of man more than the praises of God. And we think about that and we look at him and we say, how arrogant that might have been. And how he was that he just wanted the praises of the people. How about in our life today? In your life and in my life. The things that we do on a daily basis of whatever it is, naturally or spiritually, are we doing everything to the honor and to the glory of God and His Son, Jesus Christ? Or do I want to do things so that others may be able to see and that others might come in and tell me what a good job that I'm doing or how righteous that I am or all of these things. And that's what this man was interested in. He wanted the praises of God, of not of God, but of the Jews. Are we looking for praises of man or are we looking for praises of God? We read, I believe it was last Sunday, about doing our alms in secret and that God would reward us openly. And these are the things that I want us to all to understand and let's take heed to it and take it to our own individual condition and do all that we do, do it to the honor and glory of God so that it's upbuilding of His work, not something that tries to upbuild ourselves. And when He had apprehended Him, He put Him in prison and delivered Him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep Him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I want you to just visualize and think about what was taking place there. Here, this man, this man that was the rock of the spiritual church at that time. He was one of the main stays. He was the one... That Christ had told him and given him commandments of Peter, go and to teach my people. Peter, feed my lambs. All of these things he had told him to do that. And I believe Peter did what the Lord commanded him. He made a mistake there, a terrible mistake by denying our Lord. But he went out and he wept bitterly over it. And his conscience was defiled immediately when he saw what he had done. That is what the Spirit of God can do in you and in me if it is dwelling within us. 
when we see that we have made a mistake, we will be willing and ready to go to him to get it cleaned up. And Peter was able to do that. And Peter went about there and he did a marvelous work. And here he was. The government there in that day wanted to do something, wanted to put him to death because he preached and he taught Jesus Christ. Put him into prison. Was going to wait for a few days till after the feast there. A great celebration that the Jews had. But look what the righteous was doing. I don't believe the righteous was preparing to be a part of that great celebration that they were having. I believe that they had one thing on their mind as serving God through Jesus Christ. And I believe here that they understood that Peter was in great dire of danger. He was in great danger of being put to death by a wicked ruler. And where were they going? What were they doing? But prayer. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Are we praying without ceasing that God would be able to open the minds of all of us, whoever it might be, those who are here today, those that are walking upright to be able to continue to walk upright, those that are struggling spiritually that they might be able to see and know the truth and accept Jesus Christ. That is the prayer that we need to be doing in our day, just as these people had a, felt that it was necessary, that they were, should be there praying without ceasing for Peter, that he might not be put to death. They felt like that there was a work for him to do. He was their friend. They had a great love for him. And that is why they had that prayer Without ceasing, it says. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And here it was, coming up. The next day, he was to be brought forth, to be put to death. Peter was there, asleep. Peter may have, have known that the next day it was, but I believe he was at peace with God. And he was able there to be sleeping. The government there, Herod wanted to try to be sure, he wanted to make sure that this man did not escape. And here he had soldiers there sleeping right beside him, there, or they, were, they should have been there not asleep, even though Peter was, but they should have been guarding him, awake, knowing what was going on. And then there was keepers there before the door. It was a very secure situation as far as what man could look at. But all that man can look at and, and try to make things so secure here in this life can become nothing in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the Lord. And it can all be overthrown if it's necessary, whatever it might be. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Listen, here he was. Think about that. Sitting there asleep or whatever it might have been. The guards beside him, the guards at the door. But God sent an angel right among the wicked, right among the enemies of God. And the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise up quickly. 
and his chains fell off from his hands. The power of God again. Nothing could stop it. Man had no authority over it. And that same power is over us today and it can be for us that you can have power over Satan. That's what was taking place here. Satan was the one that had the guards there. Satan was the one that had him bound there. But the angel of God came forth and the power of God was able to overcome it all. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Think about what all was taking place right there, right among the guards. Bind your seat, shoes on. Put your garment on and follow me. Now there is something there that we all must be thinking about this morning that we should be involved in. Whatever the Lord tells us to do, follow him. Doesn't matter what, follow him. And that's what the angel told Peter to do. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. It was happening so quick, and Peter didn't really even understand what was taking, on, taking place there. He says, maybe I'm seeing a vision here. Maybe this is just a dream that I am dreaming. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of their own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him, just carried him all through the prison, right on out, the gates opened, there is nothing to hold him back. Peter went on down through one street and then another, and then the angel left him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. The Lord delivered him out of that. The Lord will deliver you out of the hands of Satan today, friends, if you want it. If you want to ask him, if you take your own condition to him and ask the Lord to deliver you, he will. I believe that the people were praying and begging that these things happen and that God deliver Peter out of that, that wicked man's hands. And then Peter understood that. And he saw and he knew that I know of a surety. I know this because I see of the things that has happened. That the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and of, from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, and many were gathered together praying. I believe that they understood something about the time again. And they were there, gathered together, praying, because they knew that there was a very serious situation that was going on among them. And I know that there is a very serious situation among us. And we need to be begging, we need to be praying that the Lord deliver us and that the Lord gives each and every one the truths, the truths that will stand time and eternity that are laying out right here before us and we're able to read them, we're able to understand them. We are also can be deceived just as the Jews, just as Herod. If we aren't careful, that false prophet will be right in front of us. Satan and can deceive us and to believe in a lie and carry us away. 
to eternal damnation. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, the damsel came to hearken. A damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. So excited, she could recognize the voice. Maybe he just forgot what she was doing. She said, here, Peter has come. He is out of prison. So excited that God had released him. She didn't know all about it at all, but she knew Peter was here, and somehow he had been freed. She ran back in to tell the people the good news. Are we interested in the good news of Jesus Christ today? Are we willing to share it? Are we willing to tell others that Jesus Christ has released you from the bondage of sin? Have you been able to see how he has released others from the bondage of sin and that you are able to tell people about those things? But Peter, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then, say, then said they, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And I know today that the Lord's work, when you see how, how powerful he can be and what he can do for us, it can be an astonishing work if we will just look into it. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how that the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Just go spread the word of what has taken place here. Go tell James, another one of the authorities there in the church of Christ in that day, Another one of the mainstays, he and Peter worked together in these things. And, he, and Peter wanted James to understand that he had not been put to death. And he said to the brethren, and he departed and went to another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. Think about what was going on there. Here was a prison with guards all around, and they had the man there when night came, and he was sitting there, and he was between the soldiers. He was locked up. He was chained up. And here it is, day now. And there is no Peter. The guards looking around, and where is he? What has taken place? And they were as worried, I'm sure, because they understood that in those days, if something like this happened, their life would be required. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers. Herod sent to have Peter brought out and let's put him to death. And he could not find him. He brought the soldiers in, questioning them. They could not tell him anything of what would have taken place. And he commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea into Caesarea and there abode. In all of his arrogance, in all of the things... Why did he not look around and say, something has happened here? All of these men do not understand what has taken place. None of them can give us the right answer. He should have been able to have stopped if he wanted to and says, I need to look into this father. Where is this man? How has this happened? I believe that he understood also of how that Jesus Christ had hung on that cross and how that they had put soldiers around that 
that tomb and how that it could not hold that body in that tomb. The stone was rolled away and Jesus Christ was set free. I believe that those things were not done in a corner as Paul said at a later date, some of them. He says, you understand these things. And I believe that, that Herod had heard about those things. And he could have, if he had wanted, he could have asked and delved into it and been able to, re, to have the knowledge that he should have had. And now here, this has taken place. And instead of believing and saying, what must I do to be saved? He put the people to death. The soldiers there that did not understand, that did not know how Peter had, had escaped. All of them. But they were put to death because of Herod. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Some of the acts of the apostles, the acts of things that was taking place in that day. But I want you to look here and see Herod in all of his finery and all of his royal apparel. And he made a great speech to the people. And the people looked upon him and started calling him a god. And I believe that Herod was accepting those things, the praises of men. When he should have been given all praises to God. And what took place there? He died. God smote him. And he gave up the ghost. But the work of God, the work of Jesus Christ, continued right on. With all of these things... That the, how that these men, these wicked men trying to stop it, could not do it. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose nurse surname was Mark. Is the word of God multiplying in your heart today? Is it multiplying? Are you growing spiritually? That's the question for us all. Are you growing spiritually? Whatever we do naturally, we want to see results. We want to see things. We want to be able to accomplish things and see it. If we go out and we put forth the effort... We want to accomplish something. And if we don't, we're, willing, we're ready to try something else and to do it to make sure that we are able to be successful in whatever our endeavors are here in this life. How much of that are we going, are we willing to put into the spiritual part? Are we willing to continue? To work? Are we willing to just put it into the hands of Jesus Christ? Are we willing to lay aside whatever he says lay aside? 
so that that work can grow in you and grow in me. Now there was in the church that is called that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and Barnabas as Barnabas and Simeon that is called Niger and Lucas of Serene, and Madden, Madden, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. I you to think back here and see what that first verse there says of how the, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. And he goes over and he calls out several names. And then he, he gives us a little history there. And he says, which had been brought up with Herod, the teacher, and Saul. Some of them there that were friends, maybe, of some of these people that had been brought up. And look at what Saul was. Look at who he was. And how Saul was just there. But God was able to work a wonderful work in him. How Saul was there fighting against the work of God. But how he was able to see the truth and repent and do such a wonderful work. But Herod, there is no place that shows anything about him repenting those things and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein I have called them missionaries that we would call them today Barnabas and Saul Barnabas and Paul going out now to preach and to teach the wonderful words of life. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister, a group of young men, traveling around, going right into the synagogue of the Jews and teaching them that the Messiah has come. Jesus Christ came. He has fulfilled all things for us. The Messiah is here, has been, and His Spirit is still here today. And when they had gone through the aisle and to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Hear this man, a man that had some interest in the truth. And he called for Paul and the Silas. And he says, I want to understand. I want to know something about what you are talking about. And that's the opportunity for us today. That if you don't understand, if you don't have the knowledge that you do, there is people that can help you on that way. Just as Paul and Silas and John were there and they could help people in that day. God has people here upon the earth today that can help you. If you are in that condition and you want to know more about it. But Amaius the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Hear this man, self-righteous in his own way. A man that maybe had people had looked up to him. And we can look around maybe throughout the world today and see how there may be teachers today people looking up to that has been teaching 
the wrong spiritual truths. A false prophet, just as this man was a false prophet there. But Sergius Paulus says was a prudent man. And I believe that he was asking and wanting an understanding of the truth. But Emmaus, the sorcerer, for so was his name by interpretation, withstood him. He did not, he wanted to downplay the truths that they were teaching. He wanted there to keep him, keep this man away from them. Because he saw that if he believed upon them, he would not believe upon the words and the things that he had been able to teach him in the past. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, being full of the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Now look what Satan will do. How bold he'll come right in amongst the, where the truth is being taught and try to destroy it. But look what the power of God was about to do in Saul. Saul was filled with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. He was not afraid of Satan. He had power and he understood it. And Saul, being filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on that wicked man that was full of Satan and said, O full of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all unrighteousness, wilt thou not cease to provoke the right ways of the Lord? Now I want you to look and see how strong of a rebuke that Paul gave this man. He did not just lightly rebuke him and walk away, or he did not just turn from him. But he used the power of God and rebuked him fully, and he told him how he was an enemy of all righteousness. And wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some <clears throat> to lead him by the hand. I want you to just look there what the power of God took, how it took care of that situation with Satan. And how he'll take care of it here if we will follow him, if we will walk with him. We'd better be careful, friends of where you go and what information that you listen to. And be sure that it is the words of God, the truths of God, nothing but the truth. This man, the wrath of God was rained down upon him because he tried to get in between the work of the Lord and man. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, Sorry, I skipped a verse. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord, believed upon Jesus Christ and the power that was there, and just astonished at the power of God. And our Lord has given us and told us over and over and over is what he'll do for us, what he will give to us. He says, I will give to you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that is what we need to be striving for today is that power of love that he has, that power that he will give to us that we can rebuke Satan wherever it might be, in whoever it might be, and do it with love. But when they departed from Fergia, they came into an Antioch and Poseidon and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. They walked in there. 
visualize these things in your mind and the people could see maybe they were strangers and maybe they come here they've come to tell us something new and they gave them the opportunity you men brethren if you have any word of exhortation for the people say on and I know that the Lord brings us out and he gives us exhortation and he gives us rebukes and he gives us encouragement all of these things, why? Because he loves the Lord. Why? Because he loves you and me. That's why these things are done for us. And let's see what took place there with them. And then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God... Give audience. I want you to just think about what he was doing. And I want, I want you to look at it the same way here today. Paul was about to tell them how they could have eternal life. What they needed to do. How they needed to, to get away from the things that they had been involved in. And how that they could have eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that is what I am doing. And Paul was begging. He was pleading. He was there with a strong mind, a strong voice so that they could understand how important it was. Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Give me attention. And that's what I want you to do this morning. Give me your attention, your full attention, friends. Your eternal life depends on it. Whether or not you hear the word and you do the word, you let the word work within you, your eternal life depends upon that. The God of the people, the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelled as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with a high arm brought he, out, brought he them out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided the land to them by lot. Now Paul just going to go back and tell and explain to these people what God had done for this people, for the Jews. And we, it is explained for, to us over and over and over what God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Now just follow through what took place over hundreds of years there of how God was leading this people. There were certain people there that he was able to work with and they, he was able to lead them. There was others that was constantly going wrong, that was constantly going away from him and murmuring and complaining against the work that he had to do all the way along in that. Even Saul, he proclaimed him and he made him a king. Set him up over the people of Israel. And he gave him power to do whatever it was necessary for him to do. But Saul lost out. Saul decided that he could do things of his own self and he did not have to submit totally to the will of God. And when God gave him commandments, he did not follow through with it. And the Spirit of God departed from him. It was taken away. And an evil spirit entered into him. 
and he gave the kingdom God did to David. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel our Savior, Jesus. And through that lineage, Jesus was born here upon the earth. And these were things that had been prophesied by. And Saul, Paul, just wanted to bring these things up so that the people could understand and believe. Believe upon the prophecies that had been prophesied already. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people in Israel. Again, just look at how the work of God was taking place. How he had taken care of his people. And now right there he was. He had John here teaching repentance for your sins. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of salvation sent. I believe that Paul was emphatic in that. I believe that he was raising his voice. I believe that they saw that how earnest he was in these things so that they could understand what he said. Listen again, and I want this to ring in all of our ears. Everyone today, whoever you are, listen. Men and brethren, sisters, whoever you are, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, do you fear God? Do you fear and know that he has the power to cast you into eternal damnation? If you do not accept him, he has that power to cast you into hell. He says, now fear him, all of you. Is the word of salvation sent. Now that's the wonderful and glorious part of this whole thing. That we can know and understand that. That to you, to each one of us today. Is the salvation of Jesus Christ. And how we can receive it is being sent to all of us. For they that dwell in Jerusalem. And their rulers, because they knew not, they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, have fulfilled them in condemning him. He says, all of these people there in Jerusalem and the rulers. He says, they read the prophets, they read the scriptures every day, but they do not understand and they did not know that this was Jesus Christ. And they read it every Sabbath day. And we can come out here every, every Sunday and sit and listen. You can go home and read your Bible and still not have the true understanding of God. As we read recently how that you could give all that you have to the poor and be lost. You could give your body to be burned and be lost. If you don't have that charity, and that charity is nothing more but the pure love of God that comes through having the Spirit of the Holy Ghost dwell within you. And that's what Paul was full of. He was full of that Holy Ghost. He was full of the power of God. And that's how he was able to teach and to bring forth the Word of God with power and with might. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written in him, of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, resurrected him back to life so that you and I can be resurrected to life, eternal life, friends. 
because he lives. We can face tomorrow. We can face every day because Jesus Christ lives. He was resurrected back to life. And he was seen of many. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Who are his witness and to the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers. God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children. In that, he also, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. All of these things just fulfilled the prophecies. And Paul just saying, we declare unto you glad tidings. And that is what I'm declaring to all today. The glad tidings of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And how that the promise that our Lord and Savior has gave to his people. And how those promises that are recorded here are for all that want to accept it. For all. Each and every one. God hath fulfilled the same in us, their unto us their children. In that he hath raised up Jesus again, as is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So he raised him out of the dead. For David, after that he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid into his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. David's body died and he was placed in a tomb and the body went back to the earth. Jesus Christ died. He was put in the tomb, but God resurrected him back to life, fulfilling the prophecies. And for <clears throat> but he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And I want us to everyone to understand that today. Do you all understand that? Every single one, do you understand that that's what we're talking about? That Jesus Christ is being preached to all of us. That your sins can be forgiven. And that's what... Paul was wanting to get across to these people in that day that you don't have to go through the law and, and do the sacrifices anymore. That it is through Jesus Christ, the one that hung on the cross, the one that was raised out of the tomb, that he can forgive you for your sins if you will go to him. And by him, all that believe were justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Your life can be justified through the blood of Jesus Christ, what he's saying. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Now he says, beware. Believe upon these things. He says, if you do not believe upon them, there are also things that were spoken in the prophets that will happen to you. He says, Behold, you despisers, and wander and perish. Listen, you despisers of the work, you are not following it. And you wonder whether or not it is the truth. And what happens? You perish. You perish spiritually. That's what he is saying there. 
For I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And that's the wicked. That is those that do not believe. He says, I'm doing that work. That is the work of God. That is the work of Jesus Christ. And I will do it through a man. Through a man declare I it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. The Jews, it looks like, went away. And the Gentiles there said, we want to hear more about this. The next Sabbath day, I want you to come back and to preach and teach. Do we come out today hungering and thirsting for righteousness such as these people were? He had gotten their attention. And they wanted to know more about the truth. Do we truly want to know more about the truth today? Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The congregation broken up, such as what we might be here today in a short time, we with this congregation will break up and we'll go about our own way. Now some of them, instead of going about their own business, about what they were accustomed to doing, I believe, he, and he says there, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them. Now Paul, they went and followed them. They said, and I believe that they were asking, and they were there with an inquiring mind. And Paul then, and Barnabas, just began to speak to them the wonderful words of life and persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And that's what I want to try, and, and that is my job today, is to continue to ask for you to continue to persuade you to get into, number one, first of all, to get into the grace of God by submitting to Him. And then to continue in it throughout your life right on until the Lord calls for the work of his hand in you. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Think about that. Look at that wonderful and that huge group of people that had come to hear the words of life. Maybe some of them come in there out of curiosity, but whatever it was, they were going to hear the truth. They were going to hear the word. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Look at this great multitude that's come about, and the Jews there probably couldn't get them to come to the synagogue hardly at all. Very much like we'll see around a lot of churches today. Instead of them being filled to the brim, just as we have empty seats here, we should have it, be able to have this filled so that people could hear the wonderful words of life. But when they saw this and there was a great multitude of people there the Jews were envious of it and spake against those things which were spoken of Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It is necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. I want you to think about what was taking place there. That Paul was speaking to the people. They came out. They came out to hear him. But when they heard the word and they saw that there was people that was listening... And they, they became envious of that. They were being deceived by Satan. 
instead of listening and hearing the word of God and being at one in the true church of Christ, that spiritual church, they were causing dissension. And what was about to take place? Paul just told them. He said he waxed bold, both of them, him and Barnabas. Boldly speaking again, the power of God coming out within them and speaking against Satan. And that's all it was. It was Satan because they were not accepting Jesus Christ. That is nothing more but the spirit of Satan within them. And he says, I know, he says, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. And it's necessary that it be spoken to you this morning, friends. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of of everlasting life. Now isn't that something to think about this morning? And it can be right here in this church with you, me, If we aren't careful, we can judge ourselves unworthy of eternal life by not wholly submitting to Jesus Christ. By not putting it all into His hands. By wanting to hold on to that carnal lifestyle and worship this creature more than the Creator. And how we have been warned on these things over and over and over. And Paul, I believe, they warned these people. But look what he was saying. He says, but seeing ye put it from you, but seeing you did not accept it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we return to the Gentiles. We go somewhere else with our message because you don't want to hear it. And I certainly don't want that to happen to us. That the Lord's message not be able to be taught here because we are not accepting it fully as we should. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. He says, I've told you, I've given these things, and I've told them that you should be the light of the Gentiles, that you can go and you can preach to them and, and be that light that he says, what about that light? To let that light that is within you, that body, be full of the light of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That eye, that spiritual eye, be singled upon that light and that body then be filled with that light so that it can direct you in all things. But he says that if that light is not in there, if your eye is not singled upon the spiritual part, he says that body will be filled with darkness. And he says how great that that darkness will be if we allow that. But he says, we, you and I, we all can be filled with that spirit. He was begging. He was pleading with these people. I don't believe he was just talking in a monotone voice. I believe he was pleading with these people. Just as the Lord is pleading with us today to submit to his will. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Will we all be in that condition today? Each and every one of us, let's all get in that condition. Be glad and listen to the words that are being Talk to us today and be glad if it rebukes our spirit and we see that that conscience is rebuked and that conscience suffers. It has not been seared by that hot iron. It has not been seared by Satan. 
but we still have it, and it can direct us. And then we can flee to the one that says, I'll be the perpetuation for you. I am the perpetuation for you. I am Jesus Christ. I am your Savior. I am there praying to the Father for you. The people prayed. And Peter was released. Jesus Christ can pray for you and me to the Father. He is our advocate. And we can be released from the bondage of sin. And be free. Eternally free. And these people were glad. And they believed upon him. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. I believe and I, believe, I know that Paul and, and Barnabas was still there and speaking these words. But there was people there that received of that spirit. They were ordained to eternal life and they believed upon it. And I believe that they went out and was teaching others, telling their friends about, here, here is how you can be saved. You can spend eternity with God the Father. Put away from you your wicked ways and accept this man as a Savior. And that word was spread all around. But look at how just because that word was going around, Satan did not stop. And just because the word is being preached today, Satan is not stopped. He will be stopped in you if you want him to be. And I want us to all understand that. You can stop Satan just as we have seen him stop dead in his tracks numerous times here today in trying to do things. And you can stop him. But that will not keep him from coming back and keep him from being right in the middle of where the truth is being taught. We have seen that today on these occasions here to where Satan is right in the middle of where the truth is being taught. Trying to deceive, trying to get people to believe a lie. And that will happen right here in our midst. And he will take you away if you allow it. The church is going to move on. The axe is laid at the root of the trees. And all those that do not bring forth good fruit will be hewn down, he says, and cast into the fire is what our Lord said. His work will move on. His work will be victorious. His work here moved on. It did not stop. Even though Satan tried hard to do it. But, to the, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and chief men in the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Look at how they were using them. Went out to get the, the women, the honorable women, the ones that l were high in society. But what did they do? They went out teaching and telling people against these men, these righteous men, teaching things against it. And same thing about the chief men. Look at what took place. The honorable women and the chief men. People looking up to them, but speaking lies. Speaking things that were not true. And cast the truth out. But what took place in the final end? If they did not repent and there's nothing there that says anything about it that they did. They will spend eternity in hell. When the men that they condemned and they cast out will spend eternity in hell. In heaven with our Lord and Savior. Don't let this world or don't let the things of this world 
and, look, and, and the honor that people put upon you and look upon you, don't let that overcome the Spirit of the Lord. But they shook off the dust off of their, of their feet against them and came into Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Listen to that. They tried to put them down. They put them away. But what was within those disciples? The joy of working with God in whatever manner that he asked for them to work. And even though they had been cast out, their name had been cast down, they had been told, their people were being told about how no good these people were and how they were not speaking the truth. They just went on to another place and they shook off the dust against them. Said, your sins will be upon you. We have tried. And the word has been taught to us here, friends, each and every one of us. And if we do not accept it, your sins will be upon you. The truth is being taught. And we better be careful where we go, what we say and what we do. And we better be careful of how that we have that carnal mind. And we can start a little bit here and a little bit there. And Satan will just lead you right on away into eternal hell if you let him. Or you can let the Lord just lead you gently along and follow him into eternal life. And the disciples there were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost and we can be a part of that. We can be one of his disciples here today and be filled with joy and peace and hope and happiness and be able then to proclaim his word. And I know that if that's totally within you today, you'll want to be as these other people were and publish it throughout wherever you might go. That this is what... God the Father through Jesus Christ has done for me. And he can do for everybody. He says, I came to save the world. You're already condemned, he said. I didn't come to condemn you. You're already in a condemned condition. I came to save the world, is what he said. To the whole world. And that's what we got that opportunity to know him today. This is a serious matter with us all. And I hope that we take it that way. That this is not something to take lightly. Your eternal life depends upon your condition with Jesus Christ. Have you truly repented? And are you truly walking with him today? That's the question for us all. And let's all accept him as our Savior and accept his words of what he would have for you to do and what he would have for me to do in our day with the things that he has entrusted into our hands, the ability that we have, the talent that we have, the things of this world that we have, how would he want us to use them to promote his kingdom? That is the prayer that I want each and every one of us to be constantly praying and begging our Lord for so that we can get draw nearer to him. We can draw closer to him. And there may be someone here today that would like to submit to him and let it be known by coming forward as we sing number 241, I Shall Not Be Moved.
in that song that we just sung, I believe that the message that we heard today and we saw, he says, though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. And I believe we read about there all hell trying to prevent the word of God. And it was strong and it stood steadfast. And that's what he's asking for you and me to do today, friends, is to be steadfast in his work. And then he says, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved. And I know those things to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He'll never fail us. We might fail him, but he won't fail us. Be strong in the power and in the might of God. And get that carnal mind out of our life and serve the creator more than the creature let us pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord thank you for all that you have done for us forgive us our sins and Lord fill us with that spirit that we can be strong and we can be bold when the time comes and we can stand against Satan and help all those that are seeking you, that are struggling spiritually, to come to grips with you and to accept you. I know that you're there with that reached out hand. And you'll be with each and every one that asks. Thank you for all you have done for us. And we just beg for guidance in the upcoming days that your will be done in us. And we ask in Jesus' name.